In the late 1960s and the 1970s, in West Germany you would often see vacant cabs mounted to the tenders of steam locomotives. By now they are just remnants of the past. But this wasn't always the case. What were these mysterious cabins intended for in the first place? In the mid-1950s, the Deutsche Bundesbahn, the Federal Railway of East Germany, was still short on many things. One of them was guards wagons for goods trains. Only about 4500 were available, when roughly 6500 were needed. To make matters even worse, most of them were either outdated, with a design dating back to the era of the former state railways, or as a wartime design, were never adequate to begin with. Only around 300 of the available guard wings could be described as modern-ish. Therefore, an entirely new family of guard wagons was needed, but at the same time, however, also out of the question. You see, with the rise of diesel and electric locomotives, the demand was expected to decline soon. Therefore, a quick and cheap short-term solution was required. So why not rebuild tenders into multi-purpose vehicles? And that is exactly what they did. While multiple steam locomotive classes were considered, only one of them received rebuilt tenders. Unsurprisingly, this was the most abundantly available goods locomotive, the Class 50. Developed in 1937 as a universal freight locomotive, with a light enough axle load to be also suitable for branch lines. It was built in large numbers during the war. In total, almost 3500 were constructed, with the majority of them, more than 2500, being inherited by the Deutsche Bundesbahn. The rebuilt tenders of the Class 50 received a small cabin for the train guard directly behind the shortened coal bunker, giving the guard a good view towards the wagons. Inside the cab a work table with padded folding seat, shelves, a sink and a hot plate for food could be found. Compared to a regular guard's van, the accommodations were sparse, but just enough for all the basic needs of a train guard. As the added cabin significantly cut into the tender's water reservoir, the tank was lengthened towards the back to be flushed with the buffer beam. As a result, the toolbox originally located above the buffer beam had to be relocated and was now integrated into the left side wall. These relatively simple modifications allowed for the cabin to be added without reducing the water capacity of 26 cubic meters or increasing the overall length of the tender. Starting in 1958, in total 751 tenders were rebuilt until 1962, leading ultimately to an unofficial subclass of the Class 50, which received their own service schedule separate from the regular Class 50 locomotives. Unofficial, however, as the locomotives with rebuilt tenders did not receive a new number to indicate this special trait. In fact, the cabin tenders were often switched around between different locomotives. While the cabin 50s, alongside some other short-term solutions, filled the gap of the missing guard wagons, they could not be as freely used as a regular guard's wagon could. They were sufficient when only the guard alongside the freight papers had to be carried. When however shunting equipment alongside a crew of shunters had to be transported, an additional van was necessary either way. This limited use is also one of the reasons why these cabins were only ever used for a few years. With modern diesel and electric locomotives, the guard could usually travel inside the cab as the seated driver occupied much less space than the ever-moving driver and fireman on a steam locomotive do. But only if the driver would not take on the role as the guard themselves in the first place, negating the need of a guard's wagon or cabin altogether. As a result, many previously employed guard wagons became available again and could now be used for the remaining steam power trains still requiring a guard, rendering the tender cabins pretty much redundant. As such, in the late 1960s, the Deutsche Bundesbahn dropped the separated schedules for Class 50 locomotives with and without cabin tenders respectively. Both could now be freely used, which led to the common occurrence of locomotives with cabin tenders being seen pulling passenger trains, where the cabin in question never served any purpose to begin with. But as they were now out of use either way, this didn't make any difference. The Class 50 survived right until early 1977, the final year of steam service in West Germany, with the last cabin tenders being seen in service until late 1976. Now they are a rarity, as not many of them made it into preservation. There is just something special about these Class 50 locomotives with cabin tenders. Don't you think so too? If you enjoyed this video, why not leave me a like, as this helps my videos to reach more people. And as usual, the next one is already in the works. Thank you for joining me and see you next time at Steelbridge Models.